This is a short video about the different uh, fetal skull diameter and I'm going to draw uh, the picture in front of you both from above and also the side view so that I can explain the different sutures of the fetal skull and that would be very important in understanding the mechanism of the labor. So I have drawn the, um, the fetal skull and you can see it from the above in this way that is the occipital part okay and uh, and the portion behind that is uh, basically the the lambda okay now i'm going to draw the uh, anterior fontana which is a diamond shaped structure and here we have a very important diameter it is 9.5 centimeter it is between the two parietal bones which is called a bpd or biparietal diameter Okay, and um, we have one another diameter which can cross this line going in this direction. And that diameter is about 8.5 centimeter. And it points from this point to that point. The name of this diameter is super sub -periter super sub parietal diameter which is about 8.5 centimeter it's very important to know about all these important diameter okay now we have third important diameter which is here on the front side and that is called bitemporal diameter okay because it crosses the true temporal bone and that is the bitemporal diameter is 8 centimeter okay so we have read three diameters by temporal 9.5 8.5 uh, super subparietal diameter or at least subparietal and by temporal 8 centimeter okay these three diameters should be remembered by you it's very easy to remember 9.5 8.5 8 centimeter now coming to the fontanelle we have basically two fontanelle the one on anterior and the other posteriorly so this is the anterior one okay anterior fontanelle I'm using blue marker for that. It is also called Bragma. Bragma or a tear fontanel. And that is the posterior fontanel. It is called Lambda. Lambda or posterior fontanel. Okay. I'm using different color markers so that uh, it should be of better understanding for you. If you understand the anatomy of the fetal skull, you can understand the mechanism of the labor in a better way. Okay, and the posterior part of the fetal skull, which is basically the present, presenting part, that is occiput. Occiput and anterior one is that of the sensiput. Okay, now coming to the sutures, we have frontal suture, coronal suture, longitudinal suture, sagittal suture, and lambdaid suture. You can see from the red points. Okay, lambdaid suture. Sagittal suture, coronal suture, and frontal suture. And the areas are called posterior fontanelle and anterior fontanelle. Now, from the side view, I would like to explain the fetal skull. I'm drawing the fetal skull from the side view. Because there are certain important demarcations which we need to remember. That is the occipital part. Okay, so and that is the eye. Okay, I'm joining these structures for the better understanding of the view. Now that is the mentum. From mentum to occiput. We have a specific line from mentum that is called manto vertical and which is about 14 centimeter. Manto vertical or occipito mentum. Okay, and this point is sub manto point. Okay, from sub manto. To bragma, okay. You can see sub manto pragmatic. First one was occipito mental from occiput to mental. Second is sub manto pragmatic, which is 9.5 centimeter, okay. 14 centimeter, the largest manto vertical, 
or occipital mantle the same thing from occiput you can see till mantle and the second is mantobragmatic 9.5 now this part is occipital part okay from occipital region and that is suboccipital part okay so suboccipital part and that is basically frontal bone from suboccipital to frontal bone suboccipital frontal that is 10 cm and suboccipital bragmatic you can see from suboccipital point to bragma that is suboccipital bragmatic that is 9.5 cm and from occiput point to frontal bone in which we will have the vertex presentation okay occiput to frontal bone occipital frontal diameter if you put up your hand on this line you will see that the presentation will be vertex okay occipital frontal diameter which is about 11.5 cm in 10 dj page 200 you can see it in a better way and you can understand it in a proper way if you support that okay so from suboccipital bragma suboccipital bragma diameter you can see the representation is suboccipital pragmatic the presentation will be vertex if you put line on that you'll see the presentation is pragmatic okay suboccipital pragmatic and also in occipital frontal if you put your hand from occiput to frontal that is okay occipital frontal in that case also the presentation is vertex now in suboccipital pragmatic if you put your hand then in that case presentation will be kephalic uh, will be face okay so by putting your hand in different diameter and by moving your diagram, you will come to know.